Great. Email Swoop for joining us at the National Biodiversity Teach-In. Um, we're really excited to have all of you. Um, and, um, you know, you're going to enjoy some amazing speakers. And of course, um, you're all here to learn about turtles from Jordan Gray. Um, Jordan, is this your third year? Or this is the third year, yeah. This is the third year that he's participated with us. Um, he's become a crowd favorite, which you know, is why there's so many attendees. Um, so everybody knows we did have to switch from the YouTube channel that we were going to use. So we've sent out an email to everyone to notify them that. Um, and we just want to make sure that everybody knows. But um, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Gray. Don't forget to those two special buttons at the bottom of the share screen. And um, he is going to share, share some really amazing information with you guys about turtles and some important information about a really important um, spectrum of organism that's super interesting and fun. So with that, thank you. All right. Thank you, Debbie. And uh, welcome everybody to another National Biodiversity Teach-In. I'm so honored to be here again and sharing my love and my organization's love of turtles with you all. So uh, hello to everybody around the world viewing. I know there's a lot of turtle lovers out there and it's hard not to love turtles. So let me pull up my presentation and um, here we go. All right, so we are gonna talk about protecting turtles in the time of COVID. Uh, this has been a time um, very different for many of us. Um, this has been a time where uh, people have gone through economic uh, hardships, uh, through of course uh, uh, medical emergencies, um, uh, social and psychological, um, socioeconomic, so, so many different things tied to this pandemic. Um, and at the Turtle Survival Alliance, uh, we have not been, uh, all puns intended, immune to that. Uh, we are an organization that works around the world. Uh, we are committed to zero turtle extinctions, and that work has to continue. You know, turtles have been on Earth for hundreds of millions of years. Uh, plodding along, driven by ancient instincts, and now is not the time to give up on them. Uh, so, protecting turtles in the time of COVID. First off, who is the TSA? Uh, well, the TSA, first and foremost, uh, was uh, formed 20 years ago this year. We're actually going to uh, celebrating our 20th anniversary uh, right here in 2021. Uh, we uh, formed in response to what's called the Asian turtle crisis. It is where turtles and tortoises were uh, uh, virtually being vacuumed up. Okay, well, maybe figuratively vacuumed up, but either way, taken out of their natural habitats throughout Southeast Asia and around the world uh, to satisfy the demands of a uh, growing uh, food, pet, and traditional market um, uh, uh, resurgence. Um, and that still continues today. So something had to be done about that. And the TSA was formed. Uh, like I said, we are committed to zero turtle extinctions. Um, we are made of a diverse assemblage of organizations, institutions, and individuals with a passion for saving turtles. And I have to focus on that because everybody in this organization absolutely loves what they do. We, uh, we dedicate our lives to turtles and to the mission at hand. Uh, together with our partners, the TSA is the largest and most comprehensive tortoise and freshwater turtle organization on earth. Um, so that makes our impact, especially right now during this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, critical to maintaining. Uh, strategic partnerships are our core strength. So think of it kind of like an umbrella where all of us are underneath, we're working together to save these incredible animals. Um, but 
like you see in the picture there on the right hand side. Uh, and that's just a snapshot of the people that uh, work with and for TSA. Uh, this is all made possible by individual turtle conservationists who dedicate their lives to saving turtles. So let's just talk about Turtle Stats 101. Uh, as far as species go, there's a lot. There's a lot more than people think there are on Earth. There are 476 living taxa. And when I say taxa, I mean species and subspecies of turtle and tortoise. Um, of those, 359 are currently recognized as full species. Only seven of those are marine, which is interesting because uh, sea turtles, marine turtles, get a lot of attention. And as well, they should. They are large, they're beautiful, they live around the world, and they are what we call megafauna. So just like giraffes, elephants, rhinoceroses, uh, they are very charismatic, they're large, and they demand people's attention. Uh, but what does that mean? It means that uh, 352 species and 469 taxa are not marine. It means that there's all these other types of turtles and tortoises that demand our attention. And many of them are far more endangered than those seven species of sea turtles. And that is where the TSA and our partners come in, is making sure that those species have a focus, that those species survive and have the awareness that uh, animals like sea turtles do. Um, but despite there being so many turtles across the world, turtles are in trouble. Uh, over 50% of those turtles and tortoises are currently at risk of extinction. This is the highest uh, threat level of extinction of any order of vertebrates on Earth. And it's kind of a, it's, it's a silent extinction. Uh, a lot of people are not aware that all of those species are having such troubles right now. And of course, a global pandemic that restricts the people working for their preservation certainly doesn't do any help. But all these animals uh, have many reasons in which uh, their populations have or are continuing to decline. International poaching is big. Like I said, the food, pet, and traditional medicine markets. As you can see through these pictures, these animals uh, have been collected for any one of those. And that has not only been a significant factor in the past, but it still continues. Turtles are still being taken out of the wild from the United States to Madagascar to Myanmar uh, for these different markets. Uh, but there's also many other human induced threats or as we call them anthropogenic threats. Uh, subsidized predators like raccoons, skunks, foxes. These are major problems for turtles. Of course, development. We're constantly encroaching on the habitats of these animals. Without habitat, these animals cannot persist or they'll end up persisting only in captivity. And that would be uh, one of the saddest states of all. The most beautiful place for a wild animal is in the wild. Um, but in the wild, there are still other threats like road mortality, females coming up to lay their eggs during the summertime, walking across roads and sadly getting hit by cars. Um, deforestation is, of course, an enormous problem around the world, and there's many reasons for deforestation, but turtles continue to lose habitat. Um, and there's also such things like incidental bycatch. Sea turtles who make thousand-mile journeys around uh, the ocean uh, just to be able to get caught in a fishing net or on a long line, ending a decades-old life is a uh, sad uh, but real threat to these ancient animals. But the TSA is here to help and we have been here to help now for 20 years. We have range country programs, projects and collaborations 
around the world, especially like you see here in these hot spots of, um, uh, uh, of turtle diversity. So TSA by the numbers. The TSA positively impacts 20 of the top 25 most endangered tortoises and freshwater turtles on earth, or 41 of the top 50. Uh, we positively impact over 100 species, or nearly a third of the species of turtles and tortoises on earth, making our footprint for their conservation very, very large. Uh, amazingly enough, of the Asian species, you know, where this whole Asian turtle crisis started in the top 50, the TSA has made a positive impact for 100% of those Asian species. Um, and then we also have a flagship turtle survival center in Charleston, South Carolina, just north of the city, tucked away in the woods. We have the TSC, which maintains a uh, a collection of 19 species uh, and about 500 animals. Uh, of course, during hatching season, that number inflates if we're lucky. And because of the dedication of our staff at the Turtle Survival Center, those numbers do fluctuate every year. We are incredibly fortunate to see reproductive success from many of the world's most endangered species at the Turtle Survival Center. Um, so what do we provide? All sorts of things go into conservation, education and outreach, research, monitoring, assurance colonies, lobbying, rescue and rehabilitation, captive breeding, habitat protection, Head Start and reintroduction. There's just so many components and there's a place in conservation for everybody. But the main thing that you have to have to make all those components work toward that central goal of conservation is passion. And that is what conservation and turtle conservation is about, is passion. So with that passion in mind, we at the TSA like to say, do what you can, where you can, when you can, while you're here, because the world depends on it. But then, that being said, this happened. And this is a uh, this is the COVID-19 virus. Um, it uh, it's very interesting in look, but of course, what it has done across the world is not so interesting. It has devastated lives, it has devastated communities, and it is something that continues to morph. We are continuing to see new strains of this virus. And our world has, fundament has fundamentally changed because of this virus. That also means that conservation has fundamentally changed and the way we do things have changed because of this virus. And as we know, this virus has gone all over the world. It started popping up, of course, in its origin in China, and then quickly, as viruses do, uh, made its way around due to humans, uh, a global movement uh, throughout the world becoming a pandemic. Um, and I, you know, I know many of my friends and colleagues and associates have um, uh, been afflicted by the COVID-19 virus. Uh, right now, I am currently recovering from um, the COVID-19 virus. Uh, but I still, I still feel very, very fortunate to be here, to be relatively healthy, and to be able to share uh, the TSA's love of turtles with you all. Um, but despite that, the fact is turtles need a helping hand. Um, despite a pandemic that restricted the TSA's efforts, the, T, uh, the past year has still seen impressive and memorable accomplishments um, and successes. And these accomplishments stand as testament to the dedication of turtle men and women whose passion drives the preservation of these timeless animals. So whenever and wherever possible, turtle conservationists 
have tried to make a difference because this, like I said, is not the time to give up on these amazing, these beautiful, and these timeless creatures. So really quick, I want to show you a video that we made called Protecting Turtles in the Time of COVID. And it's uh, not too long, and I hope that you all enjoy it. It's been said that we need nature. Nature does not need us. But with many species that depend on the TSA and our partners for survival, nature does need us. Now more than ever. Because threats to turtles and tortoises only amplify when we are not there to address them. Turtle conservation does not take a day off. Despite the hardships and travel restrictions imposed by COVID-19 on our range country staff, they continue to make a lasting impact. For endangered species. I am Sriparna Datta from Turtle Survival Alliance India. After two months complete lockdown due to COVID-19 pandemic, we are again back in the field. As the pandemic continues to cast its shadow over humanity, turtles throughout our programs are breaking reproduction records. From Belize to Colombia and Asia, to the United States. Turtles are creating hope for their species and we are right there with them. Whatever the threats to the world's turtles and tortoises, the TSA will be on the front lines working to address them. But we need your help. Join us in the fight for our mission of zero turtle extinctions. Become a TSA donor today. Together, we will create a pandemic of turtle conservation. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed that video. Um, it, it's amazing when you're creating a video like that because you're, you're, you're talking with all of your program managers and your field teams around the world. Um, you're asking, what are you all doing right now? Uh, what's the situation? Is there any videos? What's the news? And the most heartwarming thing is that everybody was just doing what they could for these animals despite all of the, whether it's government restrictions or of course, personal responsibility to trying to uh, lessen the impacts of the pandemic. And what was just fascinating was that turtles continued along with their uh, uh, ancient instincts. And we did, like the video said, we saw memorable uh, uh, successes. Turtles were breaking reproduction records. Uh, this year. So despite a pandemic uh, that has affected humanity, uh, turtles continued for their own survival. So now I want to take you on a trip around our range country programs and collaboratives to highlight some of the uh, successes that we have seen this year as we protect turtles during the time of COVID. So of course, with your masks on, your passports, let's get aboard TSA Air. And we're gonna leave right here uh, from TSA Studios in Charleston, South Carolina. And we're gonna first go to our closest range country collaborative in Belize. 
Uh, Belize is a small country in Central America, but it supports an incredible biodiversity. Uh, it's, it's very, very well known for its ecotourism, of course, it's jaguars, uh, but maybe less known for this very impressive and unique turtle. And this is the Central American River, River Turtle or Hicketi. This is a critically endangered species and Belize is their last stronghold. Um, they can be found in other countries in Central America, but Belize is where the highest populations still occur. Unfortunately, uh, hunting in the past and continued hunting for their meat has driven this animal to the brink of extinction. But uh, because of a collaboration with the Belize Foundation for Research and Environmental Education, um, we have been able to create the Hicketi Conservation and Research Center in the heart of Belize, deep within the jungle, where we are creating an assurance colony of this species. And right now this insurance colony continues to grow and especially in the last year during this pandemic. Uh, we had an amazing 200 and eggs, uh, excuse me, 208 eggs produced in this last year. Um, and what was also intriguing, um, maybe not so much for the people, was that a team uh, from the Belize Turtle Ecology Lab, uh, Dr. Day Lagan from Missouri State University's lab, was actually stranded during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this allowed them to be able to uh, not only focus on Hicketees um, and uh, the research they were originally intending on, but also kind of led to us moving this program forward. Um, so with those 208 eggs, there was a lot of hatchlings this year. And the population at the Hickety Conservation and Research Center grew so much uh, in 2020 that with the team stranded and with moving forward with our strategic plan, we decided it was time to start releasing Hickety's into the wild. So from the inception of this program in Belize, 2020 saw the first release of captive bred, head started juvenile hickatees into the wild. And in total, 165 young hickatees were released for their first time for a life in the wild. And so despite, again, the pandemic, a memorable milestone was achieved in Belize. All right, next I want to take you down to Colombia. Uh, Colombia is an amazing country, incredible biodiversity uh, in the northwest of South America. And here I want to talk about a very enigmatic, very unique, intriguing turtle. This is the doll's toad head headed turtle. Um, if you look at that picture in the upper left, you can probably see why it's called a toad-headed turtle. Uh, it is very morphologically uh, unique when compared to other turtles. And we actually refer to this type of large-headedness as megacephaly. Uh, these are a side neck turtle. If you look at that picture in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that turtle actually bends its neck to the side to protect itself but it has quite a large megacephalic head. Well, this turtle is critically endangered. It's endemic to Colombia, meaning it can, it can only be found there. It lives in tropical dry forest wetlands, which are one of the most impacted habitats uh, in the country. And as such, its populations are now highly fragmented and unfortunately uh, has seen a lot of inbreeding. Um, so, the best thing we can do is protect their habitat and protect the healthiest populations left in the country. And the TSA with our partners, Wildlife Conservation Society and Rainforest Trust did just that. We were able to purchase a parcel of land in Sucre, Colombia, 
And that's actually the parcel that you see there in the picture. And this parcel already had a toad-headed turtle population on it. And it not only allows us to be able to manage this uh, 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 population and the land, but it will uh, act as a reserve, as a repository for uh, other turtles to come in and genetically enhance the population, helping provide long-term genetic security and of course, growing the population of the doll's toad-headed turtle. This was the first uh, reserve of its kind created for a turtle in Colombia, and it is called La Garantina Protected Reserve. Um, what happened in 2020? Well, the pandemic actually allowed us uh, to really, really focus on habitat restoration. As you can see from that photo, you kind of have an oasis in the middle with degraded farmland on either side. And this was an opportunity to be able to, to engage the local communities and of course the managing partners in restoring this land. Thousands of trees were planted, uh, uh, new uh, water systems, were being developed to, to really start to maximize the wetland capacity. And so this is going to be a reserve that for years to come is extremely important for the doll's toad-headed turtle. All right, next, I wanna fly all the way across the Atlantic Ocean to Madagascar, a country that most of you have probably heard. I'll bet you've seen the movie, but many of you may not have been there. Uh, it's a country that has an absolutely um, uh, amazingly diverse and unique uh, 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 ecosystems and fauna. Um, and one of those is the radiated tortoise. Uh, this is the flagship species for our TSA Madagascar program. It's critically endangered. Uh, rampant poaching has now uh, caused populations to decrease dramatically. So much so that we, we really liken this to the, um, uh, uh, the American bison story or buffalo uh, in the United States. Uh, the buffalo once numbered about 80 million animals across uh, the continent. So I should actually say North America, not the, just the United States. Uh, and it was reduced to just uh, over a thousand individuals. Well, the radiated tortoise is seeing the same type of population decline. And as such, it is critically endangered. Uh, and poaching is rampant. So right now the TSA actually manages over 24,000 refugee tortoises rescued from that illegal trade. Um, so what happened in 2020? Well, we were able to continue working towards our confiscation to reintroduction strategy helping to get those uh, tortoises back out into the wild. We have not been able to actually get them back into the wild yet, but we were able to have a team of veterinarians join our in-country veterinarians and staff uh, to do health assessments on the first 1,000 tortoises that are slated for reintroduction to secret and safe um, locations in the country uh, because, again, the most beautiful place for these animals is in the wild, and that's what we want to see. Tortoises that were once refugees of a, an illegal trade put back into the wild to live a life where they should. Um, the other thing that really took off during this past year was our community program and community engagement. What we really wanted to do was build a sustainable program, providing the community with opportunities um, for their own benefit. Uh, one of those ways was uh, uh, cultivating food for the tortoises. With so many mouths to feed, uh, this provides stable income for the communities as they cultivate foods for the tortoises and the TSA purchases purchases that food. Um, because the tortoises eat thousands of kilograms of food 
um, uh, per, uh, per day, uh, it's really important that we maintain that community program. So it's been mutually beneficial for both the tortoises and the people of Madagascar. Uh, and then also on top of that, um, working with the community for water distribution um, in being able to engage the communities, uh, have these sustainable programs in areas in Southern Madagascar where um, there's often drought, uh, there's an incredible drought going on right now. It's important that we use our abilities and resources to help tortoises to also help the people of Madagascar. And so right now, the wells that we have dug and uh, manage with the communities are providing water for both people and tortoises. The next place I wanna go is India, an incredibly diverse country, an amazing, amazing program uh, I am just inspired by this program on a daily basis because it is so broad in what they do. Um, you'll have uh, you'll have to excuse me, press the wrong button there. Uh, but the one turtle I want to focus on uh, for this year's webinar is the black softshell turtle. Uh, in the past two years, I focused a lot on the red crowned roof turtle, an absolutely gorgeous and critically endangered turtle. But this is another turtle that a lot of people don't know about, but it's not only uh, unique, it's also critically endangered. It also happens to be one of the largest uh, non-marine turtles on earth. And if you look at that picture in the upper left-hand corner, you can see these massive fleshy turtles coming up out of the water uh, to actually eat pellets that are being given to them by people. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. So this turtle was believed to be uh, extinct in the wild until recently. In fact, the IUCN red list still lists the species as extinct in the wild. But the fact of the matter is small isolated populations have been found. So they are in actuality critically endangered and no longer extinct in the wild. Um, but the majority of black softshell turtles live amongst sacred temple ponds in their native India and Bangladesh. Uh, the largest of which in India is the Nagshankar Mandir Temple in Assam, in very, very northeast India. And this temple man, uh, houses hundreds of these animals. Uh, the reason that they're all there is that uh, in Assamese culture, over uh, hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, it was believed that donating turtles to the temples um, um, was a spiritual practice. Uh, it was for religious reasons, and it's continued to uh, be done so today. Uh, one of the benefits is that this turtle, who has decreased so dramatically in the wild due to uh, uh, collection for its meat, has been able to survive by living in these temples. But we wanted at the TSA uh, uh, to be able to take those animals in these temple ponds and be able to create a wild conservation program with them. So in this past year, um, eggs were collected from the sides of the Nagshankar uh, temple pond, incubated, hatched, and for the first time ever, transferred to our Nature Discovery Center uh, for head starting, meaning taking them as hatchlings and growing them to a larger size to be released into the wild will the, where they will have a better chance at survival. And you can see that incredibly cute turtle there with the peacock spots on its shell just before this release. So in December, again, despite Everything that has gone on this year, this program succeeded, and these hatchling black softshell turtles, uh, for the second time in history, and the first from Nag Shankar Temple, were released into the wild. And this was a huge event. Uh, government officials, temple authorities, uh, cooperating nonprofits, 
of course, the TSA and our friends and community members came out and ceremoniously released the critically endangered black softshell turtle into the wild. And this is just the beginning of a very, very fruitful and hopefully successful endeavor. Next, I'm gonna move on to Bangladesh, uh, a country that also uh, harbors incredible turtles, incredible landscapes, um, and is home to a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Sunderbonds. The Sunderbonds is a immense matrix of uh, mangrove swamps and rivers, and it is home to the Northern River Terrapin. This is arguably one of the most endangered turtles on earth. Uh, it is, like the others, critically endangered. It lives only in the Sunderbonds, but even within this massive expanse of Sunderbonds, which by the way is about 10,000 kilometers squared, there's only a few individuals still re uh, residing in the wild. Most of them now live in uh, a few assurance colonies in India and Bangladesh. And this program has really, really been driven uh, by the Vienna Zoo, uh, by the Prokriti Ojaban Foundation, uh, Turtle Island, the Bangladesh Forest Department, um, and the TSA, all collaborating to save this turtle. So um, there are assurance colonies within Bangladesh that house adults of these individuals slowly put together over time, and those animals have been breeding. And this year was beginning like no other, but then a pandemic hit. And then during that pandemic, uh, the weather forecast started looking very ominous. Um, a super cyclone, Amphan, uh, entered the Bay of Bengal, and it was barreling directly towards the Sunderbonds where all of these Northern River Terrapins are held in assurance colonies. Well, again, due to passion and dedication, a team of amazing individuals rode out the storm. They actually dug up the eggs from the sandbars where they were laid, brought them into a mosque, uh, and protected them throughout the siege of the storm. After the storm uh, 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 passed, the water levels receded, the eggs were then transplanted back into the ground and 115 Northern River Terrapins still hatched due to just incredible perseverance, uh, passion um, and incredible people. Um, moving on to Myanmar, another Southeast Asian country close, another terrapin of sorts um, saw a very, very impressive year during the time of COVID. And this was the Burmese roof turtle. If you look, that is an absolutely incredible turtle. It is gorgeous. Like, look at this, just a uh, uh, lime green head that these males have. Um, but despite being beautiful, it is also critically endangered. Uh, only dozens of these animals now are left in their native upper Chindwin River um, in northwestern Myanmar or Burma. Um, and so this is where um, a nest lo location protection and incubation program exists. And if you can see, uh, finding uh, nests of just a few wild uh, females still reproducing is quite an endeavor. Luckily, uh, the local villagers are very, very adept at finding nests. And this program uh, of the Myanmar Forest Department, Wildlife Conservation Society, and Turtle Survival Alliance would not be able to exist without the skill of these locals. Um, they prod the soil, find the nests, dig up the eggs, translocate them uh, to a protected hatchery and hatch the eggs. Well, the most incredible story to come out of 2020 uh, was that a lone female, called the lone survivor, living in a stretch of the upper Chinwin River, laid eggs this year. 
Now she's done this before, but every year before the eggs were never fertile. And so it was with, of course, bated breath that the eggs were located and dug up this year. But the TSA and our partners had done something in the past several years. We had released males that were captive hatched from this river system, head started, um, and then released into the river as an adult as a chance of hopefully successfully mating with this single surviving female up in her pool in the upper Chinwin River. And with the most amazing luck, and we'll call it conservation uh, achievement, uh, the eggs were viable. And if you look at that white dot on the egg, that is what we call chalking. And that is the most beautiful site to a turtle conservationist for a critically endangered species because it shows that that egg is viable. And so what happened? 14 irreplaceable turtles hatched. Absolutely cute. This story made it all around the world. It was in the New York Times, The Guardian, Manga Bay, Vice, uh, all, all throughout the internet. Uh, it was kind of dubbed the turtle with the permanent smile. And this is just an amazing moment for us. And it all happened uh, during this year of the COVID-19 pandemic. So another bright spot in an otherwise difficult year. So let's jump over to Cambodia, where the same type of program happens and again for another river terrapin. This is the Southern River terrapin, also known as the Royal Turtle in Cambodia. This, I mean, look at this turtle. This is a jet black turtle. This is a male with these beautiful golden eyes. Absolutely incredible turtle, but also absolutely endangered. Uh, again, only a few adults survive uh, in their native Sri Ambal River in uh, Cambodia. And these turtles rely on these small sandbars to be able to deposit their eggs. Well, what happened two years ago uh, was incredible flooding. Uh, and these flooding, this flooding events just washed away these sandbars. So how was this egg protection program going to continue? Um, well, one of the things that actually happened after the floods washed away the sandbars was silt from farther up river came down and created uh, new sandbars for these uh, animals to use. And the females did use them. Uh, and so eggs were still produced uh, despite the threat that possibly uh, the sandbars uh, would not be available for the females to use. And what actually happened was another incredible success for story uh, in 2020. Uh, 23 hatchlings, and that may not sound like a lot, but 23 hatchlings for this critically endangered turtle where there's only a few nesting females still reside is uh, a, a beautiful sight. It, it's an amazing achievement and milestone. And now those 23 hatchlings have joined the hundreds of others that have been hatched and raised at the Ko Kong Reptile Conservation Center in Ko Kong, Cambodia. Um, and uh, even better, this is a developing story, so I can't really tell you everything that's going on. But what I can say is that captive females at the Ko Kong Reptile Conservation Facility are now uh, starting to nest, starting to dig eggs in artificially created sandbanks. This is a huge uh, moment for the program. Uh, I can't tell you everything yet, so you'll just have to wait uh, until next year's webinar to find out and also to find out what will happen uh, with the hatching success of this coming year's wild nestings of the Royal Turtle or Southern River Terrapin. All right, let's move right on down to Sumatra. Oh, look, another Terrapin. 
If you haven't uh, uh, followed yet, uh, river terrapins are rather endangered species. Um, they are all part of this genus called Batiger. They're amazingly beautiful animals, but the turtles of this genus have been persecuted, um, or should I say, uh, uh, collected or harvested uh, for their meat and for their eggs uh, for uh, decades and centuries, really. Um, and so that has led to their critically endangered status. And another beautiful example is the painted terrapin. Um, and as you can see, it is called the painted terrapin for a reason. It has this beautiful red cap on its head. It will develop this whitish cream color during breeding season. And it's another animal that is really reliant on these egg um, discovery, uh, locating, translocation, uh, ha and hatching programs for its survival. So during this year, the teams were luckily still able to get out onto the beaches, just walking kilometers and kilometers, miles after miles, night after night for several months, just looking for the tracks of females. Very rarely do they actually ever find a female nesting, um, but they do find the tracks and they follow those, they dig up the eggs, they translocate them to the Painted Terrapin Information Center at our partner, the Satyacita Foundations um, uh, Center in uh, Aceh, Tamiang, uh, um, Sumatra, and they incubate and hatch these eggs. Last year, again, despite everything, nearly 400 painted terrapin eggs hatched and were released into the wild. Uh, that makes more than 3,000 painted terrapin hatchlings and juveniles released into the wild since the inception of this program. And what's really neat is I was just talking to the program leader who you see in the bottom right photo that is Joko Guntoro, an amazing guy uh, and one of the nicest people you'll ever meet and one of the most dedicated turtle conservationists you'll ever meet. Well, I was talking him to, to him the other day and he said that as of today, over 560 eggs have already been protected this year. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, a really, really successful year even as the pandemic continues to rage across the globe. Okay, next I want to move on to Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam is a, uh, a country rich in history, uh, as all the Southeast Asian and South Asian countries are. Uh, it's also home to the rarest turtle on earth. And this is the Swin Ho's giant softshell turtle also known as the Yangtze giant softshell turtle. It's one of the largest turtles on earth, uh, but there are only three known wild swin hose giant softshell turtles left. Uh, there is one male who resides at the Suzhou Zoo in China, um, but his mate, uh, a large female who is estimated to be around 100 years old, uh, sadly passed away in 2019. This was a critical blow uh, to the species and to hopes of conservation efforts because she was the only known female in existence. So since that time, uh, primarily led by the Asian Turtle Program, the Wildlife Can uh, Conservation so Society, uh, the Vietnam uh, and the Vietnamese government, uh, this program has set forth to discover more individuals. And the TSA has uh, provided support to these programs. And um, after just countless hours of searching, uh, uh, primarily through binoculars, but also using eDNA technology, new specimens have been discovered. And so that's why we can say that there are now three known wild Yangtze uh, or Swinho's giant softshell turtles living in two 
giant lakes in northern Vietnam. So what happened this past year while we were protecting turtles in the time of COVID? Well, uh, those teams set out to capture uh, the large known animal in Dong Mo Lake to try to find out if it was male or female because the survival of the species depends on it. And I'm really, really excited to say that the specimen was caught and it was found to be female. So again, despite everything going on, the world's most endangered turtle now has a known female in existence, giving hope to this species once again. All right, let's move all the way across the, uh, the Pacific Ocean to uh, my home, the United States, uh, where I wanna talk about probably the most uh, uh, amazing turtle in these United States. Uh, it may invoke um, uh, fear, it may invoke intrigue, either way it invokes a response and that is the alligator snapping turtle. Uh, this species is a candidate species for the Endangered Species Act. Uh, it is the largest hard-shelled uh, freshwater turtle in North America. Uh, as you can see from the picture there, uh, these animals can grow to Goliath sizes, some of them over 200 pounds. And as you can see, they have these very, very impressive jaws for biting. Well, one amazing thing about this species is that they live in the fourth largest city in the United States, Houston, Texas. If you look at that picture with the skyline of this major metropolitan city, and you see that little river that's winding through, alligator snapper, <laughs> excuse me, alligator snapping turtles live in that little river. We call it a bayou. And Houston is known as the Bayou City. We think it should be called the alligator snapping turtle city because so far our research has captured almost 100 of these enormous alligator snapping turtles just in metropolitan Houston. And there's still so much of the bayou that we haven't trapped for this species yet. We think that this bayou, again, in the uh, fourth largest city in the United States, may have the uh, densest and most demographically important populations of alligator snapping turtle in their whole entire range in the United States. But what happened during 2020? Well, plans were made uh, as they many times have to alter the habitat of, of this bayou. Um, because since the city has uh, millions of people and the city uh, sits almost at sea level or at sea level in many places, it is prone to flooding. And with this bayou being the major conduit of water uh, for uh, drainage of the city's metropolitan area, there's always uh, plans to change that. Well, that would significantly impact its ecology uh, and the turtles living within it. In fact, if this bayou were to be channelized in one of the proposed ways that was suggested, it would uh, virtually make this population extinct. It would extirpate this population, uh, one of the most important in its range um, uh, from this bayou. So in 2020, one of the things that we did um, is we engaged in uh, a public commentary campaign, really getting people from uh, from Houston, from Texas, from around the United States and around the world to write in and, and say, look, this project um, uh, could have other alternatives that won't impact this amazing population of these incredible turtles. Because we don't want these turtles to become an endangered species. We want them to continue to thrive. And so uh, during this time of a pandemic, when many of us were at our computers working, um, instead of out in the field with others or in social situations, it gave us time 
to really focus on spreading awareness of this turtle in Houston, Texas. All right, lastly, and I know you probably love those words, lastly, uh, I'm gonna take you to our Turtle Survival Center. Again, tucked away in the woods above Charleston, South Carolina, it is a turtle oasis. Uh, as you can see, it's this beautiful little quaint facility uh, tucked into the woods. It's secret, so I won't tell you where it is. And that is because uh, it manages, like I was saying earlier, 19 of some of the most endangered tortoises and freshwater turtles in the world. And those populations at the TSC are irreplaceable. Uh, some of the species that we maintain there are extinct in the wild or presumed extinct in the wild. Some of them are functionally extinct in the wild, meaning there's a few left, but not enough for their long-term survival. Uh, well, one group of turtles that had an amazing year in 2020, again, despite a pandemic that was affecting humanity, was the Indo-Chinese box turtle complex. And that's made up of three different species. The Indo-Chinese box turtle or flowerback box, flowerback box turtle, uh, the Borets box turtle, that's in the lower left-hand corner, and the Southern Vietnam box turtle, and that's in the lower right-hand corner. Um, we have assurance colonies for all of these species at the Turtle Survival Center. Uh, in fact, probably the most extensive assurance colonies for these species uh, in the United States. Um, and this year, we produced a record number of hatchings for our program. Um, so we have continued to see increased reproduction and 2020 was just a banner year. So that means that more critically endangered turtles are now on this planet. More specimens of these, which will continue to increase their population through these uh, captive managed programs. What's really, really cool uh, is with regard to the Southern Vietnam box turtle. Uh, this is a turtle that um, uh, is, uh, it, it, again, it's critically endangered. Um, it is endemic uh, to Southeastern Vietnam. Um, and our program at the Turtle Survival Center and the dedication, and I have to say that, the dedication of the staff at the Turtle Survival Center um, has led us to now being a world leader in the reproduction of the Southern Vietnam box turtle in captivity. All right, so now that we've gone around the world and seen uh, major stories about how we have uh, protected turtles in the time of COVID, um, uh, I want to talk to you about how you can learn more because many of you may have an obsession with turtles. Well, of course, we have a website, turtlesurvival.org. We also have a YouTube channel. Now, that YouTube channel is full of videos. It's full of videos from our annual symposium, which we held virtually, in which you can learn all sorts of things uh, about turtles their research and their conservation around the world. And then we also have uh, many series that I was able to perform during the pandemic. We have the Turtles 101 uh, to 104, uh, uh, excuse me, the 404 series, which covers all sorts of basic turtle knowledge. We have a World of Turtles webinar. Uh, we have ways that you can help turtles webinar. Um, and then, we have a continuing TSA Around the World webinar series where I engage with the program leaders of those countries that I just talked about. And we talk about all the conservation efforts for the different turtles in those countries. Um, so please search out uh, TSA Around the World North America, Belize, Colombia, and Madagascar. Those are currently on our TSA Turtle Survival YouTube channel. Um, and next up will be India. So be on the lookout for TSA Around the World 
India. Um, of course, if you want the most up-to-date news with the Turtle Survival Alliance, please join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Turtle Survival. We update it about two to three times, maybe even more per day. So that is where you are going to get the most up-to-date uh, information about turtles and read about the incredible stories happening around the world as we protect turtles during the time of COVID. So I want to leave you lastly uh, with something that goes all back to that passion and all back to the people who, despite all those hardships that we've talked about during this um, last year, um, is that uh, a quote that comes from John Baylor, an, an amazing turtle biologist and conservationist. And he said, despite problems conserving turtles, there are success stories. These have been long, arduous affairs, and for the most part, they have been the work of extraordinarily dedicated individuals. The turtle wars will be fought and won by individual turtle men and turtle women who are on a divine mission from the colonial gods to save their species. And I think that is no truer than during the time of COVID. So thank you all very much. And I hope you enjoy this little COVID turtle here. It makes the virus a little less scary. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed. Well, you have a lot of questions. Um, in fact, we've got a classroom, um, a fourth grade classroom on YouTube that has a ton of them. So we may we may have to follow up with you guys. Um, sure. But in the meantime, we have uh, we'll, we'll get through what we can here. So okay. uh, what kind of scientist are you and what did you study? And then also do all turtles bite? <laughs> OK, let's go with the first uh, the second one, because that's a funny one. Do all turtles bite? OK, so all turtles do have mouths and um, as an outreach specialist, one of the things I always say to people is um, if a turtle has a mouth, it could bite you. Um, so yes, turtles can bite, uh, but just like people or your cat or your dog at home, turtles have different dispositions. Some may bite you, some may not. Uh, so what's the uh, most recommended thing? Just don't put your finger or your nose in front of a turtle. <laughs> Um, uh, then going back to the first question. So uh, I have a degree in biology um, uh, with a focus in ecology and herpetology, herpetology being the study of reptiles and amphibians. Um, I have worked in many different uh, sectors. Uh, I've worked as an instructor at a university. I've been an eco tour guide. I've been a zookeeper. Uh, I work for the Turtle Survival Alliance, uh, and so and I've done all sorts of volunteer work. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, a, a rather long history, starting all the way back from fourth grade, really volunteering uh, to get to the place where I am now, where I can be a professional conservation biologist. Awesome. So there's next question is from Donna Mata. And then later she said, thank you. So I think you may have answered her question. Um, okay. But the question was, has COVID affected the turtle populations? Um, I think that you answered that. So Donna, um, and, and I think with your thank you, you got your answer. But I will link the two of you up in the event that you that you didn't get that. So another from a classroom, how long can marine turtles remain out of water? And the student who asked it is Marley. All right, fantastic question. So how long can marine turtles or sea turtles remain out of water? Uh, they, because they breathe air like all other turtles, they can actually remain out of water uh, for quite a while. Um, but uh, they, they do, um, they are of course ectotherms or cold-blooded. Uh, and so they do require, require uh, uh, their temperature being regulated from external forces. So uh, what I want you to imagine is a sea turtle crawling up on a hot sunny beach. Um, sea turtles are quite cumbersome on land. If they can't get out of that hot sun after a long period of time back into the water to cool off, their body temperatures 
uh, would get too hot and they would become hyperthermic and potentially become sick or die. Um, so sea turtles can actually stay out of water for quite a while, but they are of course at home in water and that is uh, where they have evolved um, over millions of years uh, to be at their very uh, Michael Phelps swimming best. Excellent answer. Um, the next two questions are um, a little bit long and I actually um, copied and pasted them and sent them to you, Jordan, because it looks like um, Juan Salvador is looking for a connection of being able to work with your organization. So um, in a follow up and Juan Salvador, so you know, I will make sure Jordan gets your contact information so the two of you can connect. But um, essentially, um, Jordan, how can we focus these global initiatives to places like Colombia, where continental testudines are intensely harvested to supply cultural valued foods. Um, and then, uh, so during during Catholic Lent, they are eaten as, as uh, white meat. Um, thank you. And then the second question um, just basically is, you know, how can they get involved with your organization to work on this? You're welcome, Juan Salvador. So thank you for the connection. Okay, yeah, I, I, ha I have those open. Um, so, like I said, uh, the, the Wildlife Conservation Society, uh, uh, Turtle Survival Alliance, Rainforest Trust, and, and other organizations um, um, are working in Colombia, uh, Tortugas del Sinu, um, uh, with various species of uh, Colombian endemics, and also, of course, other turtles native to Northwest South America. Uh, what I would say is if you'd like to discuss this more, uh, please email me at jgray at turtlesurvival.org. Uh, and I'd be glad to uh, create a longer discussion about turtle conservation in Colombia. Because yes, throughout the country um, and in the region, turtles are still harvested uh, or collected for food and for their eggs. And our biggest successes have come with working with the local communities that harvest the eggs uh, to actually become uh, stewards of the programs and uh, shall I say guardians of the turtles. And we've seen a lot of success there. So uh, please uh, uh, feel free to email me and uh, I'd be glad to continue that conversation. Uh, thanks so much Juan. Um, all right, so Nancy from YouTube would like to know, could you define colony assurance? Sure, so an assurance colony uh, is a uh, captive uh, location facility uh, where we can preserve these animals in perpetuity. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the royal turtle or the southern river terrapin. Um, the primary assurance colony for this species is at the Kokong Reptile uh, Conservation Center. Uh, with only a handful of wild adults left in Cambodia, uh, it's, it's extremely important to create these assurance colonies, uh, which are basically genetic banks of these animals should that species go extinct in the wild. Um, because we can use these assurance colonies or banks of animals to, uh, uh, to um, return uh, the animals to the wild or to supplement uh, the wild populations. So that's generally what an assurance colony is and uh, what it, uh, its function uh, is. Awesome. So then we have Miss Miss class, fourth grade class, uh, right here in Elgin, Illinois, and they have quite a few questions. Sophia would like to know how fast turtles can swim, and Angelo would like to know why turtles are going extinct. Okay, so how fast can turtles swim? I get that a lot. Um, if, if, if you've ever seen a soft shell turtle, and those do live there in the Midwest, um, swim, they are incredibly speedy little turtles. Uh, the fastest uh, swimmer uh, um, uh, swimmers are sea turtles. 
Um, some sea turtles can swim um, uh, at a rate of around, uh, I would say 20 miles per hour. Um, now I, I may get, uh, uh, I, I may get corrected on that one from a just a, an absolute sea turtle aficionado, but uh, there are species like the hawksbill and the leatherback sea turtle, uh, which can swim incredibly fast. Um, uh, it, I would say comparable to uh, the speed of some of your uh, fast species of sharks. Oh, and then uh, tell me again the second question. Um, Angelo is wondering um, why turtles are going extinct. So why turtles are going extinct? There are so many reasons. Um, the sad fact of the matter is uh, we are currently uh, within the sixth mass extinction that has occurred on Earth. Uh, animals of all sorts are becoming endangered or going extinct uh, at a, a, an alarming rate, and that includes turtles. And there's many, many reasons from getting um, uh, collected for food or pets or traditional medicine uh, to getting hit on the road by cars during the summertime uh, to, of course, our ever-expanding human population uh, because as we develop more cities and um, uh, grow our suburban neighborhoods, we are unfortunately taking up more of these animals' habitats. Um, so without, uh, without land to live, these animals can't survive for the long term. So it's important that we recognize all these reasons that turtles and other animals are going extinct or becoming endangered and do what we can to minimize those impacts. Great question. Um, lots of, they've got lots of good, sorry, I think I'm uh, glitching there for you. Okay. Sure. Sorry, I'm uh, taking care of a tech issue. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> it's been a, it's been a day, right? Um, okay. So then. We, we, we now live in a world of tech issues, so. <laughs> Right. No worries. Um, Allie would like to know, where does the, the biggest turtle live? Okay, so the biggest turtle. So uh, the largest turtle in the world is the leatherback sea turtle. Um, they can grow up to about a ton uh, and uh, about 11 feet in length. Um, uh, the, the very largest specimens about 11 feet in length. Uh, specimens are typically more uh, around uh, between seven to eight feet uh, in shell length. Um, you don't see as many of those 10 and 11 foot specimens anymore. Uh, but the leatherback sea turtle lives in waters uh, throughout the world. Um, and it is actually because it has a very thick um, uh, skin, um, uh, covering its shell uh, and also has um, um, uh, good fatty resources, uh, they can live in um, uh, marine waters all the way up to Alaska uh, and down to Patagonia. So they, uh, they, they are a very cold, hardy turtle um, and very, very big. Awesome. Um... So then uh, Ruby, this is the last question from our fourth graders. Ruby wants to know um, what is the smallest turtle and where does it live? And then Sarah from the Nashville Wildlife Con Con Conservation Center would like to know when it is safe for the public to visit you guys. Okay, so uh, uh, the, the, smallest, the smallest on earth uh, would have to be uh, the little padloper tortoise. Uh, they are uh, a tortoise that lives um, in, uh, at the southern tip of Africa, and they are tiny. Like an, an adult little padlopper um, can be only, uh, you know, uh, about three inches in length. Uh, some of them even smaller than that. They're, they're, they're absolutely incredibly small uh, tortoise. It's, it's amazing that they've uh, persisted on earth for so long. 
There are also uh, many other small turtles. Uh, the bog turtle, um, not only one of the USA's uh, rarest turtles, but also its smallest turtle. And that turtle uh, typically only grows to be about three some inches in length, maybe four inches in length. Um, and so there are many species of minute turtle, um, but I, I'd say the, uh, that little padlopper takes the cake. There's a ton more questions here, um, but unfortunately I need to go to get my next presenter started. Sure. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is um, take, keep track of these questions and then the people that ask them, I will connect the two of you. Is that okay with you? Yeah, and, and that's fine. Or are these on YouTube or are these through the... These uh, are on YouTube, on Facebook. People could ask the questions there and, um, and we, could, we could get them that way as well. Right, can, and I can always pop over uh, to that once this is done and, oh. and answer the questions. Sure, so um, National Biodiversity Teaching is our Facebook page. Okay. Um, and I think the majority of these folks, um, I, I don't, I think they will. And if not, um, then I will go with our earlier, just get these questions down for you and, um, and get them to connect, connect you guys, so. Sure. And yeah, I'll, I'll do my very best to, thank you so much. Yeah, I'll do my very best to get onto Facebook and YouTube and uh, answer those questions. That's perfect. We really appreciate you. Absolutely. Well, I just thank you all so much again. This is such a great experience to all those who tuned in. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your love of turtles and wildlife. And uh, I hope you all stay safe. Um, you know, uh, uh, your health is of the utmost importance and the health of others. Uh, and why don't we save some wildlife, uh, you know, along the way. Sounds perfect. And I hope you are feeling better. Thank you very much. Yes. yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being part of the teaching. And we will work to um, connect to get those final questions answered. Thanks, everybody. See you at your Fantastic. next session. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Hopefully see you next year. You will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Bye.